This is Dead Serious, a show about short horror stories worthy of discussion. I'm Dead Pallet, and I can't feel my skin when I'm with you. Today we're going to be taking a look at Skin Part 2. Again, this is at the behest of Logan96, uh, who is a patron who suggested I critique his story uh, so he can get some feedback on it. Do let him have... um some constructive feedback down in the comments, and do check out the original story posted on TooSpooky.com. That's T-O-O Spooky.com. Let's get into this. To avoid further concern, I ate my breakfast, a piece of toast and scrambled eggs. I was hoping Grandma would forget about finding me in the hallway. Can I use the phone? I asked. Grandma's eyebrows furrowed in worry. Sure. I was sick to my stomach and wanted to go home. I grabbed the phone and took it to my room for privacy. Hey, Tommy. I turned around to see him holding a VHS tape. I know you're interested in the movie I was talking about yesterday. I'll lend it to you, and it can be our secret. John handed me the tape. I took it into my room. Luckily, my dad had his old TV and VHS player. I dialed my mom's number. Hello? Tommy? What's up? She asked. Mom? Can I come home early? Why? she asked. A lump formed in my throat. I just missed my be- being in my bed, she sighed. Tommy, I know you're only twelve, but you need to grow up. Her voice was low and agitated like it normally gets when I steal ice cream from the freezer. Okay, so trying to unpack this a little bit. They they get the VHS tape. It's not sure which movie it is. Uh, probably Night of the Living Dead. Um, and, you know, hiding it from, you know, other adults around. Um, th- this moment seems very realistic to me, but I, I, there's, there's not a whole lot to comment besides the fact that um, Tommy, who, who, who we now know for sure, is definitely a guy, uh, a 12-year-old boy, uh, is trying to find a way to navigate what he's seen, knowing that he doesn't want to be there anymore, uh, and, and knowing that no one would believe his story. So he's just trying to come up with any excuse. Okay, I said meekly. Calling uh, calling me wanting to go home is something I expect from Stacy, she said scathingly. Click. She hung up before I could say anything else. I felt guilty, but I was still afraid. I returned the phone. My grandparents and Nick were sitting in the living room watching the morning news with Stacy. Last night, the Church of Omega had been ha, had been firebombed. Authorities have reason to believe that members of the Cult of Alpha are responsible, the reporter said. Hmm, Cult? It, oh man, there's Alpha and Omegas. Shit. Um, I'm not sure. That, that's some weird phrasing. Last night, the Church of Omega had been firebombed. Is that how a news reporter would phrase something? I would think they would say, Last night, the Church of Omega was firebombed instead of had been. Um, and I'm also not sure what the Church of Omega is or the Cult of Alpha. Like, Cult of Alpha, I get the feeling, you know, it's a cult. Uh, we're not supposed to know, you know, who they are. But do we also, how does the news know that it was the Cult of Alpha that did it? Um, it looks like we don't get a big paragraph here, so I'm not sure we're going to be given that information. That's important. Uh, where are the news? Uh, where's the news getting its sources? Nick shook his head incredulously. We spent all that time at war to protect my country, protect this country. Now there is a war breaking out on our soil. How are you feeling? My grandma asked. I'm okay. I'm okay. Re- I replied. Good. I was worried about you. I n- never knew you slept, uh, sleepwalked, she said. Glad you're all right, kiddo, my grandpa added. It's the word all and then right. Um, and all right is usually one word, A-L-R-I-G-H-T. He dug into his pockets. Here, he handed me a hard butterscotch candy like he did when he suspected I was upset. I eagerly popped it into my mouth. Stacy stopped paying attention to the news and sighed heavily. Can I go outside? Can I go outside and play, please? Sure, go ahead, Grandma said. Having gotten permission, Stacy scurried outside to play with her new tricycle. The news was boring me, so I followed her a few minutes later, hoping to play with her. 
Finding Stacy was easy. She was sitting in the middle of the sidewalk looking for Lorne. I went up to her to see why she was so melancholy. So I think a lot of people can relate to these kinds of things, calling home uh, to your parents when you're away from home, you know, if you're getting homesick, um, things like the butterscotch candy kind of deal, and what that symbolizes, um, th that stuff I like. Um, concerned, I asked her, what's wrong? She didn't bother looking up from the ground. Nothing. It doesn't seem like nothing, I said. She slowly looked up. All right, I'll tw twell you. <laughs> Have you seen the girl? I think her name was Amy. The image of the girl falling down the stairs flashed through my mind. Mm-hmm. Is that? Yeah, I think that's supposed to be mm-hmm. I said. The man said she does do, do not like you. She, he's mad you won't give him your, your kin. I want you to be friends with him. Why won't you please give him your kin? She said. Stacy? What's kin? I asked, concerned. I don't know, she replied innocently. So, kin sounds like it, it has probably skin, obviously, seeing, seeing as this is the title of the story. Um, a cheerful jingle grabbed her attention. The ice cream truck was making its rounds. Oh, shit, ice cream truck. Stacy jumped up and down. Ice cream, ice cream. Ice cream, ice cream. Can we go, please? I nodded. We just... Got, we got ice cream and then rushed home. Not much happened for the rest of the day. I was savoring the daylight. The sun was making me feel safe. Then night fell. Bedtime came. So whenever there's a, a really common question to be asked, you want to try and answer it as soon as possible. And the question that I have here is, um, did this, you know, where was the money coming from for the ice cream? And that can be as simple as, you know, placing in a line saying, you know, I had some money from doing some chores, you know, or mowing the lawn or whatever. And so I decided to treat my sister to ice cream to cheer her up or something like that, you know. Um, use those kinds of moments where you have a question like that to further a little um, character development. But this paragraph, nothing much happened for the rest of the day. I was savoring the daylight. The sun was making me feel safe. The night fell. Bedtime came. That sounds like a lot of story being skipped over. Um, it feels like you didn't want to write that part of the story. And so you just kind of skipped over it. But I think that there is information to be gleaned there. Um, a little bit more tension to be brought out. That is essentially, you know, three sentences worth of information. Maybe it should be two paragraphs. That, that would, that would be what I would do. And I know, um, I have that, ten that tendency to want to kind of skip over, you know, th those moments that aren't furthering the story. But I think that you want to, to allow the story to wander a bit more. You know, what, what, what happened with his day? Um, you know, what kind of things do they do when they're at their grandparents' house? Uh, there, there's tons of stuff you can do there, and it doesn't all necessarily need to directly feed into the story, just tangentially feed into it. Uh, so those are some thoughts. The night was barely, that night I was barely able to sleep. I kept expecting to hear that awful clang or see those terrible arms. I watched the movie to help stay awake. After the film, I fell asleep. I was only able to sleep for five, maybe ten minutes when that acrid stench filled my nostrils. I heard repetitious whispering. Um, would they want to watch that movie? If it's a, if it's a scary movie? And I would also just say what the movie is. It's, I think it's supposed to be Night of the Living Dead, but, uh, regardless, you know, I, I think that that's how I would phrase that. I think that's how most people would phrase it. My eyes snapped open. A burnt face was about three inches away from mine, a cigarette hanging from the corner of his mouth. The vis its visage was mostly black, except for a few patches of red on the cheek and chin. After a few seconds, I was able to understand what he was saying. He was saying, fresh skin, over and over. Fear coursed through my veins like snake venom. I sat up and backed against the wall. The rest of his body was like his face, mostly covered with charred flesh, only having patches of red 
in certain areas. So earlier we had it mentioned that um, Stacy said that this man had a lit stick hanging out of his mouth, and we're getting confirmation here that it is, an, is indeed a cigarette, but no one would say lit stick. Everyone would know what a cigarette is. Um, the, the description of the burns all across him, I would be a little more direct and just um, with a bit about saying um, patches of red over his body, black, pa- black with patches of red over his body. I would just say uh, the rest of his body was like his face. Um, it's, you, you know, you can say charred flesh, but again, we already know the patches of red in certain areas, so that's a little redundant. Um, we, we get that the accurate stench is supposed to be the smell of a burn victim, and now we have motive for this ghost or whatever it is, uh, this cryptid-like creature. It is trying to get fresh skin to cover itself, seemingly. Um, okay. I shook like a leaf. Tears were pouring down my face like heavy rain. No, 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 I screamed. I lost control of my bladder, drenching my pajama pants with urine. The smell, the air smelled like cigarettes. The room filled with smoke. It was hot as the inside of a volcano. I I dripped, sweat dripped off my ears and landed on my shoulders. The taste of smoldering flesh violated my taste buds. The man's arm positioned and grabbed me. Sharp nails dug into soft tissue. Blood pooled around the nails and dripped down onto the bed. It felt like shards of glass were being pushed into my arms. Uh, arm. A teardrop fell from my eye and hit his hand, sizzling on impact. He violently jerked. <laughs> he violently jerked me up off the bed. Uh, I'm glad I read that correctly. All right, so thoughts here is we want to be careful with metaphors and similes to make sure that they are unique enough to where they're interesting to read, but not so generic that you would hear them anywhere. Um, so it was hot like the inside of a volcano. There, there's got to be a more accurate way of describing that. I would say, you know, if it's a burn victim, you think of burned skin. And so you want to go with something that's evocative of that. So it was hot like um, burning your foot on a piece of hot coal or something like that. Um, or it felt like sunburn, like particularly bad sunburn. Like it was hot as the time I had, you know, sunburn while at a pool or, you know, that it's the same thing with um, tears poured down my face like heavy rain. Not not necessarily a fan of that. Uh, tears were pouring down my face like I'm a fan of, but heavy rain isn't enough. I think that you can think of more unique phrasing for that uh, th- that will give us more information. Um, but the bit about the teardrop sizzling on impact and um, that kind of being the impetus for this charred person to lift them up off the bed I think that that's really interesting. I want fresh skin, he screamed. The doorbed flew open. Light flooded my room as my grandparents burst into the room. And you don't want to have room two times in the same sentence like that. Flood and uh, Light flooded the room as my parents burst into the room. See, when you read it aloud like that, you hear that kind of stuff. I, I have to read my stories aloud to catch myself on those kinds of things, so um, that's a bit of advice I would give. I dropped to the bed... With a heavy thud. What happened? They asked simultaneously. Would they ask all simultaneously? Or, more probable, would one of them ask and then another one would follow up with something else to say? Now, I'm not expecting this character to remember every bit of dialogue, but when they all pop into a room at once and say, What happened? It seems like it's a sitcom, you know? Like, um, you know, someone was you know, doing some science experiment, and then there was an explosion, and then everyone comes into the room, and they're like, Urkel, what happened? And you don't want that moment. I, 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 the sobs were still in full strength. I couldn't complete my sentence. Jesus Christ, tell us what happened, Grandma said, rushing over to me. See, that's, that is a more human moment. That is a more realistic moment. Uh, Jesus Christ, tell us what happened, Grandma said, rushing over to me. You know, that's, 
That is what would happen. She noticed the dark blotch on the front of my pants. Her face twisted in disgust. Did you? I showered and put on fresh clothes. I examined my arm in the mirror. There were only four faint scratches. When I came out of the bathroom, Grandma and Grandpa were still waiting in the hall. Grandma pulled me into a bear hug. I think you should sleep on the air mattress in, in our room. I don't know what's going on with you. However, I want to make sure you're safe. Okay, that's a, you know, practical thing that a grandma could do in that scenario. I didn't argue, and I went into their room. I still couldn't sleep for the rest of the night despite having the protection of my grandparents. I couldn't get the image of that horrible face out of my mind. I swear I couldn't hear, I swear I could hear him down the hallway muttering about fresh skin. So one note that I, I don't know why this comes to mind at the very end of the story. It's been something that's been happening throughout. The fact that the sister has a, either is a child and doesn't have a good uh, pronunciation yet, or uh, the possibility, uh, equal possibility that she has some sort of speech development or speech delay uh, is factoring in to the story with the fact that she didn't know how to say um, fresh skin, um, but I do question whether, w what that has to do with, um, you know, her ability to hear the thing saying fresh skin. I, I suppose she hasn't necessarily had the case, the, the situation to hear him say it perfectly because he was kind of muttering it like fresh skin, fresh skin, fresh skin was the kind of idea. Um, but I do like that that's playing into that. So, so never mind. Yeah, that's all seems to be checking out. Um, yeah, so I know that this one was, um, part, I was a lot more critical of part two than I was of, um, part one, but I think, uh, if you clear up, uh, some of the things that I saw as issues, and th these are my opinions, in part one, um, then doing the same thing in part two really shouldn't be much more difficult. Um, punching up stuff is always, uh, appreciated, is always a way to further a story. Uh, there's a point where you can overwork something, but I think just thinking about pacing just a little bit more, um, thinking about what you, the logic of every character, slowing it down a bit and thinking, what would this character be thinking? What character, what would this character be thinking? Uh, even though the focus is on the mindset of Tommy, our protagonist, as well as, um, also kind of the mindset of Stacy. Um, would help things out. I hope that this has been helpful, and uh, I, I'm enjoying uh, critiquing this. Now, if you enjoyed that, consider helping out the community and supporting my channel. You can support the community by conversing in the comments below or on the Discord linked in the description. You can also support me by subscribing to the channel, following me on the social media, links down below, and pledging to my Patreon, which is also down below. Thank you so much for your time, and now on to our sponsor, of this non-moment in time, which is skin brand condoms. Skin brand condoms, that's S-K-Y-N brand condoms. I don't have a joke for this, I just sincerely recommend them. They're awesome.